Welcome back once again, friends. We saw how our enemy, unfortunately, has gotten hold of our technology. And we also learned that enemy does some kind of random encoding. Uh, of course, we are going to break this code. But in this process, before we can start breaking the code, we will have to build the enemy encoder. And for that purpose, we're going to have to learn how to generate random numbers in Python. Now, having done a lot of programming in Scratch before, we know that random numbers are extremely important in programming. Uh, and we also will learn that just like Scratch, in fact, it's quite easy to generate random numbers in Python 2. All we have to really do is to import this module called random. So I'll go back to my code and demonstrate that to you. So this is my program. I just go all the way to the top and I say import, import, say random. Now, this is very similar to what we had done. Uh, you know when we had gotten the turtle so we had imported turtle and then all the turtle functionality was available to us in this program so same thing we have done here and now i can use one command which is basically so i'll come down here let's say i write my code over here i'm going to say n is equal to you know say random dot rand int and you know i'm just going to give the two limits so 0 and 25. now what this will do is that it will generate an uh, you know an integer between 0 and 25 and that value will be stored as n right now one thing you know mind you that this n is a global variable and it has got nothing to do with this n here because this will all you know whatever we had the caesar shift that was all local to the caesar shift so we don't have to worry now what will happen is that n will take on a random value so every time i run this program I'm going to, you know, so if I, let's say, also put print n over here, n, uh, you know, I, I can, I'm going to get a different value of n. So this time I got 2, you know, I got 14, say I got 19. So what I can also do just to see it all together, I can put this in a for loop, for example, just for, you know, understanding uh, what's going on. So I can just say for kk in range, uh, let's say 20. So I'm going to get 20 of these. Uh, you know, and I'm going to say n equals to random dot rand int 0, say 25. And, you know, I'm going to say print, print n. And I'll just specify an n here so that I don't, you know, uh, uh, let's say, you know, the I can see these lines sort of easily, right? So if I did this, I must remove the indentation. And now I'm going to get 20 random numbers. And notice that I get... Every time I'm running, I'm getting a different number. Of course, there could be some repeats because we are not, you know, uh, preventing that from happening. But notice I'm getting 7, 24, 23, and so on and so forth. Now, this particular thing is really, you know, interesting because we can use this quite powerfully. Uh, so I, for example, this time I got zeros, couple of zeros, I got a 25 as well, right? So the point I was trying to, to do by doing this again and again is that I'm going to get numbers between 0 and 25, both included, which means that I'm getting random numbers and we can do a compare and contrast with what we've done in Scratch. Uh, Scratch, we had a function called pick random 0 to say 25. What we are doing here are in fact exactly the same. Both limits are actually included. Now, just in case you're wondering why do we need to do so much just to generate random numbers? Well, the fact is that random numbers can be generated in many different formats. Uh, there can be many properties that you can associate with them. And if you explore the library random more, you will find uh, you know, those usages. And that's why there's a separate library for it. But for our purposes, being able to generate a random integer is absolutely fine. We'll see how we'll use this to generate the enemies encoder uh, you know, uh, in the next video. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.